thank you, Don, for inviting me here. Um, and wow, thank you all for turning up. This is just fantastic to see such a good turnout at a sheep welfare workshop. Um, as Don says, I've done quite a lot on animal behaviour and animal welfare. And looking at the programme, I realised what well, we've <coughs> ended this morning. We've got four companies. We've got Numb Nuts, Boringa, Troy Laboratories, and Bayer with Trisulfan. And the, the thing that links all these four companies together is that all recently brought to market a pain relief solution for sheep. 10, 12 years ago, we had nothing available that was registered for sheep. As um, Tim said earlier, if you actually go look at around the world, we were the first, Australia was the first to have a pain relief product registered for sheep by about 10 years. I presented at the, um, the International Sheep Veterinary Congress in Harrogate in 2016. And uh, the presentation basically went through these four products and this is what we're doing in Australia and so many people from around the world came up and said, oh my goodness, you're ahead of us, wow. So that's a good news story, very good news story. Um, so I thought I'd first focus, I can talk for hours, as you can probably guess, in a Scottish accent and lots of people have told me they quite like listening to me, I'm quite soothing and I fall asleep, but I only have half an hour. Um, so I thought I would just talk about pain, <coughs> pain relief, what's in our toolbox and how we might choose the products that we're going to use on our farms. Um, I hope I don't steal anybody's thunder for later on, but I have got a slide on each of the products and hopefully that will just give you a little bit of a taste of what's to come. Painful husbandry procedures. Anybody here in your whole life has not suffered pain? No hands. It's quite difficult being a mammal and not suffering pain at some point. Now, as producers, there are things we do to sheep for very, very good reasons, such as castration, tail locking, nosing, ear notching, shearing, foot trimming, that can result in pain. There are things that happen naturally that result in pain. Sheep twist ankles just like we do. Sheep run through fences and into hedges and get cuts just like we do. Um, sheep give birth, that hurts. Sheep get mastitis, that hurts. So pain is everywhere. And what's great is we can actually do something about this now. This stuff's important. As Tim said, it's very, very important in terms of our social license to operate. Our customers, our clients, the end users are actually starting to demand a higher welfare product and pain relief. But from the point of view of the sheep, it's Pain, particularly when you're a lamb, can result, well pain in anybody, can result in loss of function. If you hurt your leg, you limp. Your leg, you can't use it, you hurt your arm. You can't use it, it makes life a little bit difficult. When it comes to lambs, that means they can't follow their use, they can't find their mum, they maybe don't suckle. There's a, a risk of loss there. And this is really weird because I can't see my friend's slides. I'm not used to that. And I can't remember what I wrote. So what is pain anyway? <laughs> That was going to turn the computer around for me. Pain, basically that's an injury. Oh, that's going to be a little bit soon. to move. Um, there's a, an injury there. And that information is kind of transmitted up to the spinal cord, then into the brain, which is where we actually process it and actually realise what pain is. And what it is, it's, it's an unpleasant experience. We feel a discomfort, a sense of experience, but a lot of it is subjective. It's what our brains think about it. And the same with sheep. Sheep and brains, they also think, sometimes not very often, um, and not very hard, but sheep do think. Um, so this perception is actually a little bit of a, a process of actually what we actually feel emotionally about what's just happened. We can talk about two types of pain. There's a fast pain, that initial, when you cut yourself, that initial, or you put your um, hand on a hot plate, um, when you're cooking, if you're totally clumsy like me, cut myself, cut myself very, very regularly. That initial fast pain, which just makes you withdraw, say ouch, or words to that effect. But then after a period of time, the slow pain ramps up, this inflammatory response where you start to get the, the redness, the itchiness, the swelling, and that throbbing feeling. The problem is, and we all know this, not all insults are, are equal. 
Depends where you hurt yourself. It might be different. A cut on your finger probably feels worse initially than a cut on your arm. Somebody standing on your foot is really sore com compared with somebody actually kicking you in the shins. So in glands, you can see that we actually just looked at knife castration. Um, there, knife hot, knife tail docking, or no handling whatsoever. And in terms of abnormal postures over the next the two hours after the insult, the guys who were castrated without being tail docked, they had far more abnormal postures. These uh, letters mean it's significantly different statistically than the, the ones that just had their tail done. And that in turn was significantly different from the ones that had no tissue removed. So I can say quite confidently, scientifically, it's washed to be a boy. We are a man. I also believe in man food. And I've, got, and I've got the science for that. The response also differs depending on the type of injury. So if you take tail docking or castration, we all know that if we look at behaviours, when it comes to rape castration, you get this extreme rolling behaviour. Um, so you get extreme rolling behaviour, extreme movements, abnormal behaviours, tail flicks, jumps, things with um, tail docking and then castration, compared with knife, um, knife, this is knife cutting a third of the scrotum off, knife cutting just a tip off and then the sham. Interestingly, ringing remove, where you actually put the ring on and remove the um, testes, and ring and remove are the tails, and you ring the tail and remove the tail, we've got a reduction in pain related behaviours compared with ring alone. So we know that the type of injury we produce also makes a difference. So never ask me which is worse. If I put up charts, this is behaviour charts, if I put charts showing physiology, showing cortisols and white blood cell things, you'd see a different picture. If I looked at just physiology, I would say, oh, it's probably the cutting ones that are worse. I look at this and behaviour, I'll say, it's the ring ones that are worse. Can't compare them, it's comparing apples and bananas. Any injury, and bearing in mind that it, it depends on the injury, depends in the injury, that's the good drama there, isn't it? There's like that, that fast pain there, then there's this development of this inflammatory response, and depending on what the injury is, depends what's happening at the tissue site. And that adjusts how, how big that gets, that peak inflammation, that peak pain period, and then gradually the body does something about it, it resolves and it heals. And you can see that, if we actually sit and watch what lambs do, again, looking at behaviours, in terms of mules, then, this is total abnormal postures. Mm -hmm. uh, you know when you mule, mules lambs, they have this tendency to stand hunch, they stand still, they, um, they walk abnormally. Total abnormal postures in mules, it actually gets worse over the first three hours. Peaks around about four hours and then start to come back. But these, from three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, there's no significant difference in the actual abnormal, counts of abnormal postures in those hours. But it's less in that first hour than it is four hours later. So if you really want to see pain in mules lambs, look at them around about four hours after the event. Same with tail docking. So this is ring tail docking on, on new lambs. Um, to begin with, in your first five minutes, you've got some active pain behaviours, the stamping, this twitching, this um, tail wiggling, this restlessness. But around about 15 minutes is when it peaks. Then it comes, starts to come back down again because the, the body is starting to resolve, maybe the nerves are dying off. Um, but there's also sheep are prey species. They evolved with wolves, foxes, wild dogs, lions, tigers around. After 40 minutes, if you still look like you're in pain, you're in trouble. Mr. Wolf is going to find you and get you. So it's very, very important for a sheep to get back to looking normal as soon as possible. So that's why it can be very difficult for us as scientists to actually say, well, we know something should still be happening here, but I can't tell the difference between the ones that have a local anaesthetic and the ones that didn't have a local anaesthetic here, even though I know the local anaesthetic should still be working, because the sheep are just doing their best to be normal. Anyway, so we know that pain happens. We know that it takes a while to ramp up fully. We know that they also try to suppress it, but it's still there. What do we do about it? Thankfully, we've got four companies in this room that have got something we can do about it. 
If we went to the hospital, we went to the dentist, we went to the doctor, apart from a, a general anaesthetic, probably is a little bit impractical in a class situation. If we went to the dentist to have a tooth pulled, or if we go to the doctor to get a small um, skin growth taken off, they would suggest, well, have a local anaesthetic injection, and then to suppress the pain, we would have these NSAIDs, these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. What's the difference? A local anaesthetic, it's local. Most people seem to forget local. It actually says on the packet what it does. You put it where the injury is going to happen. So you go to the dentist, you inject where he's going to pull the tooth. You go to the doctor to get a, a skin wart taken off, he injects at the site of the wart. It binds to the nerves at that site, and it blocks the transmissions of impulses from that nerve up to the brain. So it's really, really good for that fast pain. Um, if you call the vet out, right, I also have been a vet in practice, if you called me out to castrate a colt, I would give local anaesthetic to the testicles and around the scrotum before I castrated the colt. Um, if I'd castrated a large bull, I would do the same. The non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, these are the things we take when we've got a headache, when we've got back pain. They interfere with the longer term processing and the build up of the slow pain. They interfere with that physiology. And for those of you who like remembering acronyms, um, cyclooxygenase, uh, lipooxygenase, and acid, acid sensing iron channels, cox locks and acids. Most of the ones we talk about are the coxes or the acid blocksers. They take a little bit of time to take effect because you've got to have these receptors, these cox locks and acid receptors to be there to bind to. Anyone seen um, Nurofen Advanced targeted pain relief? It's targeted, it binds to the receptors. The receptors are where the pain is, so targeted. It's not something special, it's still Nurofen. <coughs> Sorry if anybody makes Nurofen. <laughs> um, but it alleviates slow pain. It's targeted with acid, it can't do anything else. And the timeline, if we look, go back and look at the timeline of injury, things take home messages. Fast pain at the point of injury. It's felt immediately. Local anesthetics are great for that. The slow pain that ramps up and gets there in about an hour, an hour and a half, half an hour later, none of the non-steroidals are the good ones for that. What about how long does pain relief last? I give a drug, how long does it last? It's a piece of string, really. It depends on the species. Somebody tells you that in a horse, a drug will last for eight hours. You can't extrapolate that from a to a sheep. You can't even extrapolate from a sheep to a goat or a cow to a sheep, even though you think they're reasonably similar species. They all deal with these agents differently. They all absorb them at different rates, they break them down in a different manner at different rates. So you can't even actually say, oh, well, if I take a paracetamol, paracetamol that'll clear my back pain in half an hour and it'll last for a couple of hours, I'll give it to my dog. Totally different. The agent, the actual drug, totally different depending on what drug you can do, interacting with the species. An administration route, where you actually stick it, how you get it into the animal changes how that timeline, how that drug is absorbed, what the peak levels and how long it hangs around there <coughs> in the body or locally. One of the interesting things about local anesthetics, they block something called hyperalgesia. If you ever cut yourself and then oh, half an hour later, it's not too bad, a wee bit red, a wee bit throbby, following day it stains and you just you don't want to touch it, you just, that's hyperalgesia. If you manage to get local anaesthetic onto that cut, that block, that steam will be much reduced. Route of administration. We can inject a drug, we can stick it on the surface, and we can put it in the mouth. <coughs> Even within these three different routes of administration, where we stick it makes a difference. If you actually put something on intact skin, it has to go through skin to take effect. Whereas taking trisulfan, if you stick it on an open wound, it works really quickly. 
subcutaneous, intramuscular, and intravenous. If we give a drug intravenously straight into the bloodstream, it's going to fly around the body really, really quickly, very, very fast. Stick it in the muscle, lots of drugs with it, some antibiotics, um, the event will tell you to give that in the muscle. Muscle's got quite a, a large amount of blood supply. It'll pick it up reasonably quickly, not as fast as if it went in the vein, but reasonably quickly. Subcutaneous under the skin, there's less blood supply than in the muscle. So if you put something under the skin, it takes a little bit longer for that drug to absorb. Again, you need to know exactly what the drug is. Take advice from your vet, read the label, because that will tell you where to deliver it and what to expect in terms of absorption. Even these oral drugs, especially when we're talking about ruminants, if we took the buccal jesic, which is actually designed to put in the mouth, lots and lots of blood supply in the mouth, so it's absorbed quite quickly. If you actually put it down the throat into a rumen, it's going to dilute it. So it's actually going to be slower to take effect than if it is actually deposited in the mouth. The bottom line is, wherever you stick it, the more blood supply there is there, the faster it will get absorbed into the body. So what's in our toolbox? Talking about our drugs. On the local anaesthetic side, we've got the fast pain ones, we've got trisulfan, we've got numacaine, and uh, any vet has got access to a whole heap of other vet only local anaesthetics. Um, but numacaine and trisulfan are the ones that can be used on farm by farmers. In the non steroidals, we've got the buccal I mentioned earlier, and the lower ringers Metacamp 20. And again, vets have access to other non steroidals. They're just not registered for sheep, so really we shouldn't be using them for sheep. Just as an introduction of each of these products, try Sulfur. It's a combination product, it's got two local anaesthetics in it, it's got an antiseptic and a hemostat, something to sort of slow up the bleeding and stop the bleeding. And it's sprayed onto an open wound. The open wound side is important, it absorbs into the nerves really, really quickly on an open wound. And here's um, some research for those who are like research. Here is a, a mulesing trial. We've got animals that were just hand for handles in green, animals that were surgically mulesed in red, animals that were surgically mulesed and given trisulfan at the point of time of mulesing onto the open wound. This is cortisol, the stress hormone. So just the physical lifting and handling and putting in the cradle has, has brought about a blip in the cortisol in the lambs. The uh, mulesing has shot the cortisol up at half an hour post the mulesing, and the trisulfan has actually blocked that cortisol response. So <coughs> the A and the A, they are statistically the same, whereas the A and the B are statistically different. So trisulfan's had a really good response on that cortisol, they had a really good effect on that cortisol response in this particular chart. I mentioned the hyperalgesia. This is from work that the University of Sydney did. Try solving treated wounds. Here is a pressure sensitivity. So most <coughs> compared with meals without trisulfan, the meals with trisulfan, the ones that have, have trisulfan at four hours and eight hours after mulesing, you can touch the, the wound and the lambs don't flinch. With a particular they call it bone fray filament to test that flinch response. With the mules ones, Okay, three minutes, things are ramping up. Remember I said the pain response ramps up? At four hours and eight hours, just the lightest <coughs> touch with these von Frey filaments on that mule's wood, those lambs jump out of the cradle. They're really hypersensitive. Trisulfan blocks that. The local anesthetic blocks that hyperalgesia. None again. I'm being very brief here with the different products because I know you're going to hear more from the companies themselves later. <coughs> None again. It's also a local anesthetic. It's injected at the site of ring application using the NumNuts tool. And Rob is going to tell you a lot about the tool itself, which is designed to deliver the local anaesthetic at the time of ring castration and tail rubbing. He's hopefully got some more results, but here is uh, again, we've got, I should change, I should get all my colours um, consistently, really, shouldn't I? Shan, the handle of bunches, this is behaviours. Um, at 20 minutes, 35 minutes, 55 minutes after ring castration. Um, and then castration and tail walking. This one just everything all mixed in together. This is the ring only with no local anaesthetic, and this is the ones that have had numbnuts. 
And you can see at five minutes and 20 minutes, at the peak pain response here, we've got a good effect and a good reduction in those pain-related behaviours, the rolling, the kicking, the, the twisting, the up and downs going on. And this is quite a big trial, and as I say, males and females, in a panic situation, lots going on, and we're still getting significant benefits at that time of peak response. And you can see, even the ones that have just been ring castrated and tailed up here, they, um, they're actually heading towards normal very, very quickly. One hour later, they're very, very close to the sham handed ones. They're doing their best to be normal so the dingo doesn't get them. So, best practice. Like Best practice would be to look at local, if you went to the doctor, would be to look at having a local anaesthetic followed by a non steroidal, get rid of the fast pain and the slow pain. <laughs> Medicam 20 is a non steroidal. The drug is, co is called naloxicam. We get naloxicam ourselves as humans. The doctor will, some of you, yeah, I can use these and some people have had naloxicam or see, had naloxicam used. It's quite good. <laughs> the Medicam 20 is injected sub subcutaneously. The formulation is designed to go subcutaneously. So it's ideal for if you've got a, nice, a race or a nice holding pen and you can apply prior to the procedure, give it a little bit of time to ramp up. And again, this has done weird things. This is a, a study that was published recently. These are sheep that were laying on one foot. So on that lame foot, they were, they were actually made <coughs> lame for a, as a pain model. For 20 <coughs> seconds, the sheep, they were just counted how many seconds they held the foot up for. If they were untreated, they held the foot up for about 17 seconds out of 20 seconds. The Medicam treated ones only held it up for 7 seconds. So a big reduction in that pain in that foot. And also then we, we put some uh, pressure onto that, like a bit like the one elements in the flinch response, add some pressure onto the, um, the foot where the uh, inflammation was. And the untreated ones, at a very light pressure, pulled the foot away. Whereas the ones that have Medicam would withstand a much greater pressure being applied to that foot before they pulled away as if this is done to normal. Significant difference in time limb raised compared with between the untreated and the metacam ones, significant difference in tolerance to pressure. Bacalgesic, also naloxicam, different formulation designed to go into the cheek. So this is what we call transmucosal absorption. Very easy to use. Um, all our farm guys um, are very comfortable with using the bacalgesic applicator. Um, and here again, a couple of studies for, on knife castration, hot knife tail docking. Significant differences, now instead of the A's and B's, we put these P numbers in, just for your statisticians. If P is less than 0 0.5, we're statistically significant. IVP is the buccalgesic, and a placebo was a blue gel that looked like the buccalgesic but didn't have any naloxicam in it. So we've got a significant reduction in total of normal behaviours, total, um, uh, significant reduction in that hunch standing they do after my castration and tail docking. They also do that funny stretch, particularly with the castrated ones. They do that kind of stretch down, trying to get pressure off that injured area. We have a significant reduction in that, and a significant reduction in that weird, funny, stiff walking that they do after my castration. Back to multimodal analgesia. Complicated bra. Hope you just love scientists. Back to green is the sham. This is a total of normal behaviours in a two hour <coughs> period after surgical meals in. So this is in the first two hours, second two hours, third two hours. So that's up to six hours in total. Sham. Sham animals still do abnormal behaviours. There might be a fly annoying them, they might just be bored. They do wiggle their tails, they do flip. They do, we do count occasional abnormal behaviours in sham handled animals. The um, mules animals, uh, again here on the red, high counts of abnormal behaviours in those time periods. And you can see the letters, A significantly different from C. If you look at the blue line and the yellow line, these are trisulfan, um, the blue is actually a 
meals with a placebo and a, a trisulfate. And you can see that there's a reduction from, because that's a B there, reduction in pain-related behaviours compared with the meals throughout. Um, starting to come, because the meals are coming back down, starting to come together here. Bufflegesic is the um, purple one. There is a difference between the, the meals and the bufflegesic here, but it's not significant in that first two hours in the total of normal behaviours. In that second two hour period, you've got a significant difference. In the third two hour period, you've got a significant difference. Put the two drugs together so that the animals that had orange lime, they had meals in with bufflegesic and trisulfan. You've got the benefits of the trisulfan, add the benefits of the bufflegesic all the way through, and you've actually got a greater reduction. Just as Tim mentioned earlier, you've got a greater reduction in pain related behaviours throughout that six hour period. That's just behaviours, just one just one run. So my key messages. When it comes to pain relief, if you do nothing, do something. If you're doing one thing, think about doing two things. And the whole point of this being a toolbox is not every solution suits everybody. Pick whatever actually suits your system. Think about what it is you're doing. Are you doing knife castration, tail dolping, using? Are you using rings? Do you have races? What staff do you have? What is your actual situation? Has so anybody wanted to ask me what we use at the side of the farm in Armadale? Or four in different situations. My hope is yes, we've got the research side of things which is completely different, but our commercial sheep flock that aren't being researched, we, our farm team will use whichever of the four suits whatever they're doing at the time. Then I can finish. Questions for later. Thank you. Thank you.